Look at this foot swap. Bam. Textbook. Again with that left hand. What is going on here? Interesting. Maybe this guy knows more about climbing than I think he does. Oh, okay. Getting, getting more aid from the human. Oh, yeah. Today we're going to answer the question that nobody asked. Which animal is the best climber on the planet? This battle of the species for the title of best climber will be determined between four groups. The monkey, the lizard, my personal favorite, the cat, and the greatest of all time, the goat. We'll examine these animals in their natural and not so natural habitats, break down their climbing, and score them based on some key climbing components. And since I'm on team people, let's get started with our closest relative, the monkey. Oh, we're at a climbing gym. Yeah, yeah, slap the floor. Donkey Kong style. Okay, that's straight aid. Oh, that was a sick dead point. He's... He gripped the underside of the hold with his foot. Damn, the hand-foot matching is impeccable. Damn, look at that foot swap. Pretty instinctive and natural. All right, let's break down his climbing. All right, he's just chilling away from the wall, picking his nose. Okay, relinquishing that right foot is just not that smart. You want to move from opposite hand and foot. So right now he's almost in a bit of a pogo to do this next move, but he is getting help from a human. Yeah, it's set the right foot for him. Okay. that I'd say that foot's a little high, but with the monkey's hip mobility, he very naturally pushes off that back foot. Look, he's even gripping the foothold with his foot. Look, oh, getting a hand foot match. Quite impressive fitting in that small box, but also look at its left hand. It's not really the best utilization of that hold. I'd say a downward pulling edge would be better than cupping it the undercling section of the left. Yeah, it's just super comfortable fitting in small boxes. There's no, no flagging at all for this monkey. That is a very nice dead point. Off of a smear, too. So you can see his right foot's not even on a hold. It looks like it likes to move in epsilateral positions. So instead of moving in opposite hand and foot, which humans do, it favored the left hand and the left foot. It, it did push off the smear, but a human would have actually swapped out the foot, put the right foot here, turned the hip in. Yeah, it looks like the monkey does not... Oh, there is a little bit of a natural hip twist to that. Look at that. And the right foot is actually in a bit of an inside flag. Interesting. Maybe this guy knows more about climbing than I think he does. Again with that left hand. What is going on here? It cups everything as an undercling. It, it downward pulls, but it cups it from the underside, which is very interesting. L look at that high right foot. That thing is useless. What are you doing there? Oh, okay. Getting getting more aid from the human. Oh yeah. Look look at this thing. This is this is stupid. What what's going on here? So imagine if your foot was the shape of your hand and you're gripping a hold from the underside like this, instead of actually just setting your foot and pushing down, it's manipulating that foothold like a hand. And it's favoring all these undercling positions, which is very interesting. I'm not sure if it's the smartest way to climb, but it certainly works out for this guy. Again, a little natural inclination to inside flag. Yeah, very interesting that it likes to move off the same side hand and foot and flagging on the inside. That's very old school. Oh, look at this dead point. Again, same side hand and foot, high right smear, and then pushing off the smear foot to gain that dead point. Wow. And a little foot swap on the smear to get the high right foot. So hip mobility is definitely on the monkey's side. And very well-timed foot swaps. Again, just balancing same side hand and foot. A little bit of a down flag. Opting for the high right foot. Look at this foot swap. Bam. Textbook. A little bit of a hop. Actually quite minimal. Not hanging on the hands too much. Again, the janky left hand. But we'll forgive him. And then, like, an interesting choice to grip a handhold like this with straight arms, not being able to leverage it. It's kind of like a weird, funky Gaston. Nice little swing around the arete. Look at this. Again, same side hand and foot pogo dead point, pushing off 
I guess not, not so much of a pogo, but pushing off the right smear to move the right hand. Quite good. And controlling the swing. Same side, left hand, left foot again. Using the down pull of the right hand to actually gain some momentum, but really relying on that right smear to go right hand. It's pretty good. Hey, hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you find this style of analysis intriguing, guess what? I actually analyze human climbers too. I've been a climbing coach for several years and have worked with people ranging from beginner climbers all the way to national level athletes. If you're interested in improving your technique and want me to analyze your climbing, follow the link in the video description to sign up for a free online lesson. Now, back to the animals. Okay, let's take a look at this guy. Oh wow, catches it second try. That's actually several body lengths. He kind of Tomoe stepped up that thing, it seemed. Yeah, little hand foot match to get to the top. He's like, no, they feed me down here, so I'm actually gonna go back down. Looking for a down climb. There's no there's no down climb rungs here, buddy. Oh, damn. Dropped from a pretty tall distance. All right, let's break down this guy's climbing. Like, okay. So, first off, this is... Let's say this is triple body length. So, homeboy over here is about this high. And the distance he wants to travel is up to here. Yeah, that's about three times. Imagine doing a running hand foot match smear Tomoa step dino. Oh my goodness. So no handholds really gets a Tomoa step basically off of a smear, lunges with one arm, which is actually quite smart. Hips are hips are square, which is okay because I think rotating your hips for latching a move like that would kind of be the end of you. Look how smooth that launches and look how close it is to the wall it's not coming out at all even with the uh, hand foot match yeah just a little bit of a fade away right here and look how close it was to getting that handhold oh my god look at this look at this it does a freaking freaking backflip off the wall it's like oh i'm falling i don't have any crash pads so i'm actually gonna do a a little makeshift, I think this is called a castaway in parkour, except castaways are done with your hands pushing off, but it basically does like a foot first castaway. That's impressive. That is some sick proprioception, maybe more sick than what a cat is actually capable of doing. Okay, this time, same movement, no handhold, just a hand foot smear match pushes off, but look at the speed of that match. That is very fast. Let's watch it in real time. Like microseconds, like a one, two. Like it planned to do it almost, but leading with one hand for maximum reach. Oh, that that would be sick if it could hand foot match on that high left. Oh my goodness. Look look at this. This is like it can almost even do a figure four if it knew what a figure four was, but it thought about the hand foot match. Uh I can't really get any friction or pressure with a left foot crosses the left hand that's actually quite interesting looks like he's going to traverse but this is a sick cross so the hand foot match was unnecessary but swinging that left leg through to smear and that is such like it's like a cross but with a dynamic finish and another match oh shoulder blades a little catching that a little less engaged the arms are bent which is good that's a good sign that the arms are bent, but the shoulder blades are a little drawn up. You can see the head tilt back just a little bit on that catch. Oh, actually, no, it didn't even tilt the tad back. It is not even remotely tired. Stops the swing, looks around. This is kind of the uh, the dino move alternative to Alex Honnold's boulder problem in free solo. Instead of going for the karate kick, the other option was just a double dino. But look at how this guy sets up the the dyno he's leading with his left hand so instead of releasing both hands at the same time and going like this and rotating he actually leads with the left 
which actually causes him to rotate more naturally instead of having to kind of initiate it just by twisting. The left kind of opens him up for the rotation. Look how high he is when he catches that. Like catching it here so that you're fully engaged with a lock off. There's no danger of catching it straight and having all your body weight kind of just like, yeah, even with that, he kind of goes pretty low. Pretty strong dude. <laughs> Looking around. Yeah, the left smear is slipping a little bit. Man, look how much force he generates off that smear. Look at this perfect hand foot match right here. Left foot goes up and finds the handhold and is able to push. That was just like the most effortless Tomoe step. He's not even going full power with that push. Just just enough to get to the lip. And then almost like, yeah, another freaking hand foot match to finish. This is, I think this is the OG. This guy actually probably created the Tomoe step. If he didn't create it, he's definitely the best at executing the Tomoe step. Those hand foot matches are just flawless. I'm not sure about, well, I guess he does have to go down so that he can go back to his den and continue to exist at the zoo and get fed. Looking for a down climb route. <laughs> Ugh, just decides to drop. Oh, and just spots his landing though. Doesn't eat it. Oh, you can't really tell. Actually, let's see. Did he die? Spots the landing. Oh, lands on his freaking feet. He's like this, horizontal. Down climbs, let's go. Has the proprioception to, oh my God. Spotting the floor the whole time. The head does not move. Just pushes away. Head is isolated and then just twists and sets the feet on the floor walks away no big deal amazing 